Good morning. We are Team Volta. I'm Tim Chang. And I'm Jose Garza. And we've got some very important updates to our project for you guys. Uh, as a reminder of where we are and what we're trying to do, um, we, the, the aim of our project is to develop a tool that will be helpful in identifying boats and or fishing structures on Lake Volta, which is in Ghana, and then issuing flags that could help authorities uh, investigate the possible use of child slaves. If you also recall, last week we mentioned that one of the project risks uh, for us was that um, if the resolution of the imagery we intend to use, which is from Planet, uh, would be so low that it wouldn't allow us to identify these fishing structures um, or these fishing boats. So after speaking with an expert on image recognition late last week, uh, it became apparent to us that uh, it will be impossible to achieve our initial goals uh, given the low resolution of our images from Planet Labs. To show you what we are talking about, this, this is an image uh, from Planet of a portion of Lake Volta showing a fish farm structure. Now, Planet provides this uh, imagery updated on a daily basis, but the trade-off is that the resolution, as you can see, is, is quite low. You can just barely make out uh, the, the outline of this fish farm structure. Now, that same area of the lake shown here on Google Maps Right away, you can tell that the resolution is, is much higher. In fact, it's 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 very high. But the but the trade-off, um, on the other hand, is that the frequency of this update is is very low in comparison to Planet. The resolution is high, and, and in fact, high enough that you can actually, uh, as you can tell, you can see the the type of boats that these slave owners are using on the lake, and the resolution is high enough that you could probably actually detect the changes. Um, of the fish farm structures and also uh, increased activity of these, these boats in different regions of the lake. So that's what we're talking about, the difference between high resolution, low frequency earth imagery and low frequency, high resolution earth imagery. Now given this technical obstacle, we are planning to descope de -scope our project to use synthetic data with our image recognition algorithm. So this should still allow us to prove our concept, uh, the ability to detect um, changes or suspicious activities on the lake in real time given the high frequency of planet's image updates. And we'll do this uh, in hopes that soon, hopefully in the near future, uh, this high temporal, high spatial resolution imagery would become available. To show, we, we want to show this concept in three frames here. So, so you guys have a better idea of what we're talking about. So here on the left, we have a frame of a portion of Lake Volta um, as it looks like normally. The second frame we have inserted to test our, our algorithm, inserted an uh, a image of a boat that looks uh, oddly triangular and very pink. Hey, Tim, that looks suspicious. Uh, indeed it does, Jose. Indeed it does. So let's flag it. Over here on the third frame, we'll see that uh, this, is, this is ultimately what we intend to do with the Google Maps API. And as to the proposed architecture for our project, we're currently envisioning um, two files to reside on our web server, which would be a user-facing HTML file that would be accessed through the web browser. And this HTML file will communicate with the JavaScript file that will leverage both APIs, the Planet Catalog API and the Google Maps API. Um, we do not currently know if we will necessarily be using the Planet Catalog API, but we're just um, laying it out here as to um, um, just for potential use. And um, with regard to the pieces of code that we are um, looking forward to write, we we think that we will use uh, basically four functions at the moment, and the first function would be um, one in which we train an algorithm uh, and we teach it how Lake Volta usually looks like. A second function uh, that will help us identify new objects on the map as that hot pink triangular shape we saw two uh, slides ago. And um, then a, three, a third function that would help us obtain the coordinates of the identified objects, and lastly, a function that will help us map the coordinates on a Google map obtained through function number three.
and uh, just to, um, to talk about the next steps that we'll, the, the, we'll, we will be taking, uh, we're thinking about starting to explore the documentation of the APIs. We also need to start exploring the method that we will use to identify the synthetic objects. And uh, we also want to start writing some code.